Hey guys, Simon from Caddis Fly Shop and Oregon Fly Fishing Blog. Um, Going to be tying another fly for you guys today. Um, this is a classic one, uh, Goddard Caddis. Um, floats like a cork, kind of unsinkable, really great fast water fly. Um, I've been tying a lot of them lately and um, pretty quick once, once you learn how to spin the hair correctly. So this can kind of also be a tutorial for those of you who don't know how to spin or like kind of pack to your hair. So. I'll kind of explain that to you guys here today. Um, so looking at this fly here, if you guys haven't seen one of these before, it's um, spun deer hair for the body. Uh, I use a variety of colors, and then there's just a little bit of hackle towards the tip. You can put dubbing under it if you want. Um, the antenna are just you know spare pieces of deer hair, which you'll have quite a bit um, after. So um, you can spin it with elk hair, you can spin it with deer hair. Elk hair is a little bit more coarse, so it, um, fills up quicker. People like to spin with elk. Um, you can do deer. It really doesn't matter. Um, basically the idea is you want to like pinch it in and as you wrap it, it s flares out and um, and then I like to pack it to get it even tighter. It helps it float more. So I'll, I'll kind of explain how you guys, to you guys how we do this. But um, you do need to either trim it with scissors or shave it with a razor. Um, either one uh, works fine. So I'll kind of give you guys a rundown on how to tie this and how to spin and pack uh, deer hair. So um, the hook I used is this, um, again, this A-Rex sedge hook in a size uh, 14, the FW530, this guy right here. Um, for thread, I like to use, especially for this fly, I like to use this Semperfly stuff, um, nano silk, 50 denier in olive. Um, it's really strong. You kind of got to crank on this stuff when you're uh, spinning it. So. Um, what you're going to want to do is just get like a little base of thread down, um, just a little bit, uh, especially towards the back. You're going to want to put a little bit because our first um, pinch of hair is going to be the whole back of this. Um, and you want it to get packed towards the back here. And you don't want to, as you pack it and push it, you don't want it to go down the bend of the hook. Um, so I do like to build up just like a tiny little bump back here as a precaution so I, when I'm packing it, I don't force it down the, um, the bend of the hook. Um, and so basically what you're going to do is you're going to trim out a bunch of hair like this. Um, you know, if it's one color, just take a big hunk of it or just take little clippings as you go. Um, I did a bunch of different colors, so I just took a bunch of it and pre-mixed it before we started filming. Um, and you're going to just kind of take a clump of it like this. And it's, you know, there's not a whole lot of skill to it. You just take it on here, get it where you want it, and you clamp it down and you see it flares. And as you spin, that's what spinning deer hair is. And for these last first couple of wraps, you have to help it around the shank of the hook back here. Um, but you want to kind of spin it like that. Um, and then you take wraps in front of it to secure it. And then you do another one. And I like to do like, you know, one or two bunches first before I start packing it, really to make sure it stays in place. And so you kind of pinch and spin and it kind of flares and then kind of help push these back. And you're just going to repeat this through the whole body. Um, probably after this next clump, I'm going to start packing it a little bit to make it a little bit tighter. Um, again, that just helps with buoyancy. Um, one thing I should have said is, is this is kind of messy, um, so having a little hand vac or something does help. Um, but now we will start packing it. So you take a packing tool or a half hitch tool will, will work, um, and you're just going to push it back and like really jam it together. I like to put one finger in the back so I'm not sliding down the shank of that hook. And you'll see you just keep making more space for yourself um, as you pack, and that just makes you know it just gives you a tighter concentration of hair so it floats a little bit better. Um, and again, we're just going to um, pinch it down, spin it around, wrap through the front, and then pack. And we're just going to kind of do that until we get to the point where we want that hackle. Um, the harder you pack it back, the more hair you're going to get. You just don't want to push so hard that you're, um, you know, that you're bending the hook back like that and it's slipping out of your vise. or um, that you are, um, you don't want it to slide down the, the shank of the hook. So basically we're just gonna kind of repeat this until we get to the point where we wanna put um, the hackle on. So I probably can squeeze one more in. 
kind of spin it around. You can tell you, you want it to spin like that. Um, that's why they call it spinning deer hair. So we'll kind of look and see how much space I have left. That looks pretty good. Um, if we really push it back, yep, that's enough real estate to do what we want to do up front. So, um, you know, the body will be pushed back like this. And uh, what I'm going to do right now is take some wraps to make sure this doesn't come back forward. Um, these little ones that are getting caught in here, I'm just going to trim them out. Um, and now we will either trim it with scissors or shave it. Um, I've been sh doing a mix of both lately. Um, these Derby uh, razors work really good. They're super sharp uh, and you can kind of bend them to how you want. Um, one precautionary thing I always do, um, especially if you're using these razors, is they're really sharp. I will um, do a half hitch or a little whip finish really quick just in case I clip my thread while I'm shaving this down. You don't want the whole thing to come undone. Um, and so now I'm going to put this on my bobbin rest and get it out of the way. And now we're going to do the shaving part. So I like to flip it upside down if you have a rotary vise and I like to just cut the bottom flat first. Um, this is one of those things where that's exactly why I whip finish because sometimes you do catch that. Um, I do like to go slow with this part because if you shave it down too much you cannot put that deer, deer hair back on the hook. Um, and you kind of just take your time and you want to shape the body so um, these uh, razor blades are nice because you can bend it to get the right you know bend that you want when you're shaping this. Um, and like I said, I like to start big, kind of like a sculptor, and work your way down. Um, I like to make the front smaller to kind of match the hackle, is the idea. Um, but basically, you want to you want to make the the shape of like a caddis body, you know, like small front, and the wings kind of go back, like, kind of like a triangle a little bit. Um, and I'll soften these edges a little bit down here where I shaved it flat. Um, you know, this is kind of what we're looking for. So I leave the back um, normally until the very end, and you can always shave a little bit more, do a little bit more. Um, but right now, I'll show you guys how to put the hackle on here. So if you lost your thread, like I did, um, you'll put it back on here, and um, trim your tag end if you need, and then um, you know. The classic pattern does have little antenna. Um, you know, you can use a variety of things. I just use these. Um, you're gonna have extra deer hair all over your desk when you tie these, so I just grab, you know, the tips of two matching colors um, and uh, kind of tie them in right here at the tip. Um, the colors I used for this, I used brown, um, medium, dun, black, um, and olive. Um, you don't need to use a bunch of different colors, it's just how I do it. Um, I like kind of a mottled look. Um, and this fly is one of my confidence flies if I see caddis out. Um, it floats really well through fast water, um, so I like this fly a lot. Um, and so you can use the, you know, whatever you want, you know, you can use, what I really like is the dyed deer body hair from Hairline. Um, it comes in a lot of different colors and chunks, and if you really tie a lot of these or you're spinning a lot of deer hair, Hairline does make a product called the Primo Deer Hair Strip, and it's a strip about, you know, four inches wide by maybe like 18 inches long. Um, don't quote me on that, but it's a very big piece. And uh, if you're just going to be running through this stuff, you know, you don't, it doesn't matter how the tips look really, you just need like, you're going to trim most of it and throw it away anyways. So you can get it in bulk like that, and it's pretty treat cheap. Um, you know, that's really what you should be using if you're tying a lot of these. And so I'm going to put just a small hackle on. Um, this is just like a brown you know, saddle from whiting. Um, anything will really work. I just use brown because it kind of matches with the rest of the fly. Um, and so we'll kind of tie this, this feather in back here. Um, I will put just a tiny little bit of dubbing. Don't want too much because you're kind of crowded towards the front. Um, the first one you tie, if you've never tied one of these, will probably be crowded and weird. Um, but as you go, you kind of learn how much space you need to um, kind of squeeze stuff in at the front. So, you know, I'll just put just a little bit of dubbing here. Um, 
We'll take some wraps here. And I like to do this pretty tight. Um, if I can, just about as tight as I can. And then we'll clip it off. Clip the hackle and then we will um, whip finish here. And so now everything is in place and the only thing we have to do is kind of shape the back. Um, and so I like to save that for last so I can kind of look at the whole thing. And so I kind of take diagonal cuts towards the body like this um, and then I'll kind of go up the body like this and you kind of just want to shape what these wings look like towards the back. Um, curved scissors work great for this if you have a pair. Um, I don't so I just make these work. Um, but kind of you want to, the wings to kind of come back like this. Um, and so if you have any stragglers, which you might because you just spun tons of deer hair on there. Kind of want to get them off. But here's a, you know, super old school pattern. Um, still works great. You can still find them in some shops to buy. Um, they're fun to tie. It's a really good pattern to learn how to spin deer hair. Um, and yeah, give it a go. It's pretty much unsinkable. Thanks.